because OBS loves me like that. Um, who's next? Let's go to Chloe. Hi, I'm Chloe, uh, pronouns she, her, and uh, I'm playing Lyra, the tiefling paladin um, of, she's the Oath of the Ancients um, paladin. Um, she's basically your standard tiefling, standard mom tiefling. Um, yeah, and she's very excited to help out the group in any way she can. <laughs> Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla, pronouns she, her, and I play Pentar, the Circle of Spores Druid. Um, I kind of modified an ancestry in Mordenkainen's and made a Zugtmoy one. So she's very shroomy and is terrible. So it's great. And I think TK, you're our last uh, tiefling today because we've got no holly. She's off with her favorite family. Yeah, her favorite family. <laughs> 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 Cold blooded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm playing Gil Azariel, Tiefling Paladin, um, and he's he's here, but he doesn't want to be here. But he's gonna he's gonna do as well as he can get away with. Awesome. Are we getting good feedback for the sound levels today? I saw someone mention it was better. I haven't seen anybody say it's too quiet this time. So. Oh, that sounds good on all my devices. Oh, Fingers all crossed, because right, it sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. And I yes. don't know how it sounds on Twitch, because I'm not watching the show. I'm doing something else right now. <laughs> so, the multiverse is an infinite place. All manner of planes and demi-planes exist in the cosmology known as the Great Wheel. Our tale is woven in the outer planes. There's a circle of 16 named planes which arc around a central hub known as the Outlands. We're going to start today's journey in one of the gate towns um, called Excelsior. The gate towns are towns that lie on the edge of this Outlands circle and each one contains a portal to its corresponding outer plane. The towns are a taster of the plane that lies beyond but they must take care to not become too similar to that plane or they will be consumed by it. So, for example, you've been to Automata, and you found it to be a very logical and ordered place on the surface. However, to stop it tipping into Makarnas, it's kept out by a seedy underside of the town, which is quite chaotic. Deals are cut, and crimes committed in the sewers, literally underneath. And so it goes to the other gate towns. There's the balance to be had in all. After saving the town of Heart's Faith, you realised uh, your good robot son, S34N, was joining in with the march, and you chased him through the portal. Uh, Mega, you did notice that the wing you have proudly tied onto your, your good son has gone. As the Modron you tore it from breathed its last and started to dissolve into nothingness, so did the wing. So you're catching up with the marches going through this portal, and you get up to, to S34N and he's like clicking and beeping at another Quinton when you get there. Um, Mika grabs onto his little fork hand and pulls him and says, where are you going? Where are you leaving? He starts clicking and beeping at you, forgetting that you can't speak Modron. Mika clicks back. <laughs> <laughs> he's like... Beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, beep, beep. He goes beep, 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 <laughs> and like tries to pull him up back. <laughs> uh, as you do that, a um, a knight steps to you, Mega, and he says, "What are you doing with that Modron?" Uh, Mega looks up at him and goes, "This is my friend." A friend. Yeah, he's my best friend in the whole in the whole plains. We're best friends. I gave him his little fork hand, and he had a wing, but I think it fell off. Ooh. Maybe you could help me then. Um, possibly help your friends too. Yes, yes. How do I help? How I want to help my friend. So. I was worried because you see, some Modrons have been kidnapped from the march. And have you? do you know what happens when a Modron dies, small child? Is it, is it the true death? <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that it? 
At this point, you realise Dirge isn't actually with you. Uh, she's sort of shuffled off and she's handing pamphlets out back in the town somewhere. <laughs> she's just like shuffling around a corner with her pamphlets, like crumpled in her hands. Um, Mega points and goes, she knows that what the happens with the death and dying. And he looks around at all of you and he's like, are you, are you guardians of this small tiefling? I mean, you're, you're, I don't want to assume since you're all tieflings, but, um. She's seven. Why are you asking her about what happens to Modron's you die? I don't know if she, know if she understands what happens to anything when it dies. I don't know how tieflings age. I don't really come into contact with many. Um, Mercy will sort of protectively walk behind Miga and put her hands on Miga's shoulders and then get distracted by Miga's hair and start, like, sifting through it for things. <laughs> um, and just picking them out and dropping them on the ground. And now she's just ignoring the night. Well, Pentar sees this, like, she was over with Dirge doing whatever and snaps and sees this guy talking to Miga and runs in front of Miga and hisses at him. Like, gets down on all fours and is like, <laughs> he's really just like, mad, like, good point, Pentar. <laughs> yeah. He's like a bit taken aback. Mm. Miga me looks it. at uh, Mercy and goes, is my candy still in there? Um, <laughs> there's candy in here? And I start, like, sifting through deeper. <laughs> <laughs> there's probably, like, a peppermint disc oh, no. in there. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Libby just goes up, notices that he got startled. Like she just gives a bow. It's like yeah, we're we, we are make, taking care of her. What what seems to be the problem? So, um, I was concerned that your child was um, kidnapping a Modrong. As I have said, um, we have had some trouble with um, a group that are based near here kidnapping the Modrons. Um, it's quite troubling. Um, you see when a Modron is killed. It dissolves, its essence disintegrates, and a new Modron is reformed in Makarnas. But, um, your friend here looks like, um, it's been at the hands of the group already. They, they have found a way to take parts from Modrons and attach them to people but they must keep the Modrons alive to do so. Uh, my sister uh, was infiltrating them, and I, I got a sending spell from her, and it was quite troubling. The last thing she said to me was, uh, the Knights of Takarim have mastered a new dark law. You mustn't let them get at the Modrons. They're using the Modrons to... And then it cut off, and... I counted the words. There are more words in ascending than that. She didn't run out of words. Oh no. Mm. Also, I, so they are still alive. They're. Oh, they must be in great pain. That's that's awful. We, oh, uh, we can I, totally help you. Uh, I'm I'm gathering uh, mercenaries together to protect the march as they go to the next town. Perhaps you'd like to accompany us. There there will be some payment for you. You yeah. look like seasoned adventurers. Um, yeah, so Delby just looks at the rest of the group and just kind of, like, nods. Is like, is that okay? Pentar hisses. <laughs> Lyra will bend down towards Pentar and be like, Pentar, it's okay, it's okay. We accept. I, I think, I think what's happening it makes me, it's just, we need to help. And she'll kind of look uncomfortable with the whole situation and, like, the fact that they're, you know, being destroyed. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Mercy is shaking her arm because there's a piece of hairy candy stuck to her hand. Uh, Mika uh, sees she's the just candy. like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Mika sees the candy and like immediately takes it and puts it in her mouth hair and all. <laughs> oh god, that was both Lisa and Mercy reacting. <laughs> oh. And Gil? Um... Gil is paying attention to this with some interest, but he is not 100% invested. He'll actually look at Lyra and is is it kidnapping? 
Well, he's just... Is it kidnapping if they aren't people? And Lyra will kind of look and be like, well, everybody has their own ways of, you know, going about things. But I think even if they aren't people like flesh and blood, they still, we still should help where we can and, and get to the bottom of issues. They don't, they don't, they just don't seem like they have enough free will for that to matter. Mm. Can they feel pain? Do we know that in pieces they are worse off than when they're intact? Mm. Vera will kind of look and, and kind of her eyebrows will furrow and she'll be like, well, is there someone we can we can ask? Is there someone who would know about this more in depth of them all and how they're formed and, and what's, what they feel, if I they feel anything? I just don't know if I'm willing to die for these things. Hmm. Let me mm -hmm. just kind of edges over to him and just kind of whispers. This is a noble, like, order of knights. You could get a recommendation out of it, but Gil. You want those, right? <laughs> Symbols form around Gil's hat. <laughs> Lyra looks and she's like, do you want me to tell you a little more about the place that you're in at the moment? What you Absolutely, can see. Yeah. So Excelsior is, it looks very similar to Heart's Faith. It's very clean, very pristine. It's not the regular ordering that Ultimata was, but the buildings are this sort of um, gleaming white stone, and they're just the sun catches. Well, it's the the light catches flecks of silver and gold embedded in these bricks. In the centre of the town, there are towers which rise high up, uh, t at least twice as high as any other building. The streets are paved with the very similar sort of marble looking stone that's got flecks catching the light as well it's very opulent Gil would love this place opulent is such a good fucking word <laughs> yeah Gil absolutely opulent. loves this place and he'll and he'll look from levity to lyra and he'll think about it and he'll say we should rescue the people but the little tin men don't really matter Lyra will kind of furrow her brow at kind of the words of they don't matter. Because I think she, Lyra believes that everything kind of has its place in the world. But she'll nod her head and be like, well, we'll make that decision, I suppose, when the time comes. But for now, let's focus on helping who we can. Yeah, Gil will nod and he'll take Lyra's lead on that. Mm. And um, the knight that's standing in front of you does say, well, if you could help my sister, I would very much, I mean, I fear for her well-being, but my, my duty is first. I must honour what she said. I must prevent them from capturing any more Mojons. But if you could find out, I would very much appreciate an honourable gent such as yourself. He'll, he'll, he'll nod and he'll look very thoughtful and say, "Yes, we'll help the people." So he explains to you that what they are going to do. So that at the moment, the march, it's sort of spreading out into clumps now. So it doesn't take the full twenty hours that it did to cross a single point. It's maybe you're looking at fifteen hours long, from end to end. It's one of those things you've got to measure in time, not distance. Like a train is about a week long sometimes, if there's too much freight. And he's setting up groups um, to guard the march as it goes along. And he's got rotor systems worked out. Like, Mercy, you see his schedule and it's very impressive how he's just planned everyone's times. 
where they're going to be, what they're going to do. And he assigns you to a point in the middle of the march. So you can follow along with the march, go about twice the speed of the Modrons for a bit, and then rest, and then the bit you're with is going to catch up to you. And he says that uh, if you want to go along and do this and help him, he can offer you a couple of hundred gold each as a fee. Ooh. <laughs> good deal. Yeah. <laughs> good deal. And as he sort of escorts you to your assigned point on the march, he explains about the group that have been kidnapping. He says, uh, the Knights of uh, Takarim, we have a lot of run-ins with them around here. They often raid around the um, this town. We don't like them coming in, though, obviously, with their wicked ways. They're a cabal of soulless warriors and black-crafted spellcasters, and they're interested in nothing but selfish gain and conquest. We don't know why they're attacking them, apart from this strange ripping of limbs. Um, but, you know, we must stop them. It must... They must have a base around here somewhere. Mm. We don't know if they're going to be in small groups. We don't know if they're going to stage a big attack. So be ready for anything. And so you're assigned this um, section of the march to guard along. So what are your plans for guarding the march? How are you doing it? All the Modrons are just marching along. Mm. How many buildings are there around? Are they this real is, close together? This is between towns. So mm -hmm. um, once you get out of the town, it's a sort of um, open plain. There's a couple of jagged, peaked mountains scattered okay. around. In the distance... Maybe a couple of days travel away, you can see um, across the plain another town surrounded by a forest. Okay. So are we are we guarding this area or are we escorting this part escorting. of the Escorting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In that case, it might be better to... I don't know. Maybe form... A guild will, like, look at the party... Um, and kind of assess how everybody is together. And he'll look at Lady Lyra and actually say, we should, we should have two, uh, knights, two commanders with two teams of heavy hitters, two, sh uh, two strikers apiece, mm -hmm. um, and kind of lay out an idea that he and, um, Lyra should both lead two separate teams, maybe on mm. either side of the march, maybe up and down, um, with two people a piece. Okay. Lyra agrees. She thinks that it's best if we kind of spread out and make sure that we have all bases covered um, in terms of escorting this group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. How do you want to split up? Um, Mercy will disguise herself as much as she can using disguise self uh, as one of the Modrons. And they have the sort of same like limb structure. So I don't know if I'm allowed to actually look like one. Uh, if not, I'm just a metal version of Mercy and I'm I think, marching amidst them. I think disguise self actually can do that. If like someone cool. tried to touch you in the parts where the Modron, like, the Modron's waist, as it were. I think they'd encounter your body invisibly. But you mm. can look like one, I believe. Yeah, then I'm just gonna march along as, yeah. a, as a Modron, in <laughs> case anything's happening in the middle of the group. Okay. You, uh, a few of the Modrons just start beeping at you. Beep, oh, I... Beep. 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 <laughs> and they sort of click a few times and then carry on marching 
<laughs> Actually, no. Um, pers- do persuasion. Persuade the Modrum to oh, no. be <coughs> correct. Oh, no. Oh, no. Best, best of luck. <laughs> oh, no. I, did, I, got a, I rolled a 19, and I'm good at persuasion. So, 26. Yeah. Ooh, yeah they, 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 nice. They, they carry nice. on marching, and, like, one of them even, like, sort of, uh, a couple of them start marching in step with you like little bodyguards. Nice. You're clearly oh, they're an... guarding me, guarding yeah. them. They're cle- <laughs> you're clearly an important Modron with your beeping. Yeah, nice. You're probably the yeah. most clean, the shiniest one, probably. Oh, yeah. very important. <laughs> Real oh, shiny. Yeah, Mercy stands out. All the rest of the Modrons are dusty and muddy, and they've like one of them still got seaweed on it from coming through like the the portal. Not the ones around me. I'm cleaning them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just this little patch of shininess emanating from Mercy and spreading outwards. <laughs> teach, them, teach them your ways. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine, like, as this is happening, Lyra's like, where did Mercy go? Oh, there, oh. oh. And then, like, she's like, oh, there she is. It's like you a just... trail of clean Modrons. Yeah. <laughs> you just hear, like, the skicky, skicky, skicky of, like, a, a animated rag, like, oh. Yeah, if, if Mercy's marching in step as a Modron, then Gil's going to go ahead and assume she's on his team and uh and at least try to keep up with her okay and he'll look over his shoulder yates <sighs> i don't know mika uh, immediately thinks that gil is talking to her because she's also yates so everyone's yates though so yeah no one responds. everyone just looks at each other and just like, <laughs> Pentar um, wild shapes into a giant boar that's like covered in fungus and has Dirge hop on her back and keeps in step, keeps like mercy in her line of. Oh, Dirge isn't with you. Sight. Dirge, Dirge won't Oh, she's gone. gone? Yeah. Okay. So just me, just watching out for mercy. Like, but I'm rideable if anyone wants to ride a boar. Fungus <laughs> boar. <laughs> I like to think that Pentar sometimes like comes up to Mercy and Mercy's cleaning Modron, so she's like, "No, Pentar, get away!" Yeah, just <laughs> snuffles at you. And keeps, just moves away. Yeah. Oh man! And and Gil will actually before he goes to walk with Mercy, he'll remind Lyra that neither one of them has to walk anymore. No. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Oh, are we doing this? Are we doing this? <laughs> Oh boy. Not yet. He's not tired yet. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get tired in like ten minutes. <laughs> um, Dungeon oh Maz. Boy. That's my new name for you, Dungeon Maz, instead of DM. Um, Dungeon Master. Yeah, because I yes. I thought about that on the bus on the way home from Virginia. <laughs> uh, um, uh, is is my sweet boy? Is he still kind of like beeping and booping on his own, or have he, I convinced he, him to be next to me? He is with you now. He's absolutely with okay. you. Can I put him? While Mercy was like mm-hmm. trying to clean your hair, he kept like sticking his fork up and combing little bits of it. Mm, Dingle Hopper. Can uh, <laughs> uh, can Miga put him on top like he was before, so that he won't attempt to wander away? Mm-hmm. I do this with my parents' dogs all the time, where I will trap them in the room that I'm in with them and force them to love me. <laughs> so I wish to do the same. <laughs> understood understood yeah um yeah i think lefty is just going to be like just watching the um just kind of skirt the edge of the giant modron group and just kind of if there's anyone next to her she'll probably just like chat chat them up while um kind of being a sentry mm-hmm. pentar will be next to you <laughs> as <right>. a big <laughs> boar <laughs> <laughs> I have so it's like, to see Levity ride Pentar at some point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she'll, I, I mean she, she'd be okay with it. She just, like, walks me- next to you and snuffles. Okay. She'll just, like, kind of, like, somersault on there and just kind of, like, maybe, like, also kind of st- every once in a while kind of stand and, like, ride and stuff like that. Oh, like, proudly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Her, like, cloak in the breeze and stuff like that. Yes. Oh. That's so cool. Do, do some, um... Acrobatics. Shame oh my! No, no. So no. Good. Or do you? Oh god! If I if I just if I just face plant, it's gonna be real embarrassing. 
Dang, that was right. cold blooded. Just like <laughs> just right off the cuff. Just um, like roll for it. <laughs> Twenty four. Ooh, perfect. Mm. perfect. Beautiful. Gil's yeah. jealous. Yeah, it looks amazing. Um, Gil looks got a cow. Cow. And is like, I taught her that. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Lyra applauds. <laughs> yeah, so like Gil yeah, also just... claps because you know she likes to be a part of it. Yeah, Levy had just like that's a little flourish she's used to like doing like you know performing and stuff like that. Yeah, I've changed the overlay, so you're now in your teams. Oh. How oh. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. oh my gosh, we're so cool. We we oh really yeah. Cool. And with a and with that high of an acrobatics check, what can we say? You did not squish any of the mushrooms on my body. <laughs> like <laughs> narrowly avoided yeah. them. Yeah, I think no Levy knows she has been harmed. Yay! I think she knows like do not touch any of the mushrooms unless she wants him to. Mm. She gets real mad. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, you march along with the Modrons like this and your first day is fine, the weather is clear, nothing really happens at all. And then it gets close to night time. What are you doing for your evening preparations? Anything different? <sighs> Um, are we? We're still continuing to march on the with Mojons them throughout the night. Do not rest. They do not mm. stop. They just march. They do mm. not need food. They do not. <clears throat> You've realized as well with S three four hen. He likes to pretend to eat, but he doesn't need to. Mm. He just like does it know. to join in with Mega, and he just dishes you out little sachets every so often when Mercy asks. Flavor <laughs> oh. packets. Um. <laughs> yeah. As um as we continue to march and Lyra sees that the evening is kind of starting and like the sun is starting to set, she's gonna walk around and reach into her bag and get all of um everybody be like, Okay, we have to keep our sugar up, we have to keep everything going. We're it's gonna be a long night and she's gonna give them um these little candies that she has in her purse. Um oh. they're like a blue kind of circular candy with gold flecks in them that she probably would have gotten in water deep um before she had left um on her excursions so she's gonna kind of like hand everything out to every all of her party members and just be like just make sure to keep your sugar levels up we need to just keep on continuing on everything's gonna be fine and she's just gonna hand them out um to everybody are they wrapped um yes they're kind of like wrapped with like um like just a clear Okay. So like they're like the old tiny little <laughs> yes candies. exactly yes yes and they if, if you eat one they they taste like um, sugar and vanilla oh well Ooh. Pentar like opens her giant disgusting boar mouth expecting you to put it in her mouth and also her breath is horrible and it's just like hot and in your face <laughs> oh. gross um, <laughs> Lyra's gonna be like oh okay and she'll just like unwrap it. <laughs> For you and just be like, boop, and just tuck it in there and then pat you on the nose. Mm. Oh. She just swallows it. <laughs> Mega holds hers up to um to Lyra and is like, "Can you open for yeah. me, okay. please?" Yeah, I can. Do that. <laughs> and she'll unwrap it and she'll tuck it in your hand and then fold up the little piece of plastic and put it in her bag. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Mega puts it in her mouth. So you're doing all this, and you hear um, a noise from um, the f near the front of the march, and it's too far for you to get over there at any time soon, but you can see what's going on. And as you sort of turn around and look, you see that there are three riders on uh, black horses, so like dark shapes, mm -hmm. racing into mm -hmm. the march. And they're followed by these um, lower shapes that are too dark to make out. They look almost like the night itself in a form. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly these smaller beasts start howling. And it's it, it's like, it's not like a wolf. It's just darker and more evil. And it seems to scare everyone up in that section even the modrons seem a bit sort of perturbed by it and um as like the that section of the march starts sort of like scattering a little and the guards around them seem to be panicked 
um, the riders each grab a Modron, like, by a wing or by an arm, hoist it up on the back of the horse and run off. Hmm. Oh. And we, we see all this happening, clearly. Like, everybody sees that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Pentar kind of, like, snuffles at Levity. Okay, like, yep. Should we go? And then she yep. takes off after one of them. Yep. She just hops on. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lyra's going to run after Pentar and Levity and follow. Okay. <laughs> it would be faster on a mount. <laughs> uh, Mika immediately swings herself onto Pentar and is like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! She's yeah. ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cold-blooded. Um, Gil will look and see what Mercy's doing, doing first, if he can even discern her from the rest of the Modrons. Do you see Stop. one of the Modrons awkwardly shuffling through quickly, like uh, pushing past all of the Modrons walking yeah. as quickly as it can yeah, towards the Ruckus. Okay, yeah, he's convinced that Lyra probably has it, but is also kind of like, isn't it our job to kind of hang out here? Like, but he'll he'll start following um, a mercy then, and he'll he'll put some pep in his step. Um, well, the um, knight that gave you the um, can't think of the word. My brain assignment. That's the word assignment. <laughs> Rides up, and he's got a couple of extra guards with him, and he's like, "We heard a noise from up front. What's what's happening?" We couldn't see what was going on. Which one of us is he asking? Anyone that's remaining. <laughs> to take off. <laughs> that yeah, Gil's probably in the in the tail, so he'll he'll describe what happened. He'll tell him it's like three riders, um, possibly some sort of a shepherding pre predator, uh, maybe a wolf. Do you have wolves here? Are wolves? <laughs> Do you people have wolves? He's like. <laughs> After them, I've got. I'll get some more guards. Get after them. Find out where they're based. We need to stop okay. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not super happy about taking orders, but yeah, he'll actually, and he'll he'll put his hands on his uh, yikawa, and he'll say, um, and he'll he'll like say like a small like a a small prayer that he remembers from reading his prayer book, even though he. Not a hundred percent sure who it's true to, but he'll he'll be like, "I need your speed," and <laughs> uh, and summon his his steed. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think normally isn't it a ten minute summon? But I could say like, where you've been watching, what's been going on, um, Lyra, you and Gil probably could have summoned your steeds during this time mm -hmm. if you want to. Summon I'm totally yours. cool with him, like. Fast yeah. walking while the. This <laughs> is probably going to take him a little bit of time to get there anyway. <laughs> On foot or standing still, it's going to take a few amount of time. Oh my god. Um, I actually, I, this is the first time I've ever played a paladin, so I totally forgot about that. So I'm, I figure, yeah, maybe Lyra would have summoned her steed, but if it's too late, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, no. Fine. Tell us about your steeds. Yes. Um, yeah, so I guess she'll, she'll summon it. It'll be a big, um, like a mastiff type dog. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh so, God. yeah. <laughs> so she'll summon it. And it just out of like this, like golden twinkling light, just appears this giant, like mastiff creature uh, dog that just kind of lumbers up um, beside her and then, like, kind of like looks like determined. <laughs> and um, yeah, she'll scratch it on the head and hop on and continue yeah mm -hmm. i feel i i feel like she would like be fast walking like, <laughs> like a jogger and then she'd be like wait hold on hold on and then she'll summon him and then she'll yeah she'll go <laughs> and um you what do you summon? <laughs> so gil's not gil's not great at any religion stuff whatsoever he knows that he wants to be a knight and he knows that the most powerful knights are paladins um so that's like that's what he set his heart on so instead of really praying for something he kind of uh 
relies on his family's holy symbol, which is the Yukawa, to do all of his work for him. So when he's like imagining his steed, he's imagining the type of things that he would see when he was growing up in Kalimshan, which are like these like massive battle camels with like these huge like these people with spears on them and they're yelling and racing across the desert. That's the first thing that he thinks of when he thinks of like a majestic amazing steed because all of the horses kind of where he's from are real small they're like arabians so that's not like the first majestic thing camels are like boom they're they're sturdy they're fast you could sit at least one person on them so that matters <laughs> <laughs> and so that's like what he's in it he's like I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he summons, though? <laughs> That's entirely up to you. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, everyone. We talked about this before the show, what Gil would summon. I, I, I don't want to make it. It is not a battle too. camel. <laughs> <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna make him summon the other thing. He's gonna summon the other thing. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, so... Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so, yeah, he does hear, he does hear, uh, the split, the sort of split hooves on the, I guess, on the terrain in the distance as, like, it sort of, like, fubada, 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 fubada <laughs> comes towards him. And, like, coming up, like, in the light of the moon, cresting this this low hill is a um a very like smaller not quite majestic but um very sturdy looking uh black furred llama <laughs> <laughs> with a silk with a silk cushion on its back <laughs> and it kind of like it's it's very um it's a little portly and so it kind of like a trips chubby. its way a little bit down the hill and like kind of hangs out by him. <laughs> and he just kind of like looks at the the knights that are kind of still around and just like it's a very um noble creature and like kind of like <laughs> like a bond to it <laughs> to oh. battle <laughs> <laughs> so, so to clarify, you have Levity Amiga riding Pentar as a big mushroom-covered giant boar, and then you have Lyra riding a giant celestial mastiff, and then Gil riding a llama. <laughs> there are no horses. Not just any llama, like this chubby, cartoon-esque looking llama. <laughs> As she was robot oh. shuffling, Mercy was waving her robot arms at Gil to catch a ride, sees what shows up, and turns to Lyra instead. <laughs> As Lyra sees this, she'll kind of like just stifle a little laughter. Like she'll just kind of be like, oh, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. And she'll like go around on the mast to pick up Mercy and continue on. <laughs> And like Mercy, you you wouldn't fit on the llama anyway because it's just that tiny bit too small for Gil. <laughs> oh, so, so, it is like you know, as it's like as it's galloping across the plains to reach the rest of the party, like his toes just barely brush the ground. Oh my god! Because he's like six foot three. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> oh my god. I hate this party so much. I am <laughs> so proud of you all. <laughs> so I like the right llama now. has a really happy, derpy face, too. Yeah. <laughs> like his, his tongue, tongue is just slightly. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> his tongue is like in the wind. It does like, yeah, it does have to get to the end. Okay. Yeah. Miga sees this and is immediately like enamored. She's never seen anything like this before. Um, probably has seen like dogs or or boars but has never seen this and it's just like it's another kill <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Um, so perfect <clears throat> so, <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. you you start to track this um penta actually do me a Survival check with advantage. 
Uh, 18. Perfect. Um, you are, you've got your snout to the ground every so often, like snuffling away, following the smell when you can't see them in front of you. And you track them, um, back. And it takes, oh, a good half a day. It's like morning by the time you've got there. And <clears throat> you come up to this, it's closer in so where you are on the outlands the town is on the edge and in the opposite direction is the spire which is where Sigil is so it's like just this ridiculously tall thin mountain that she goes up and up and up and up and it just doesn't seem to have a top and you're not even sure where Sigil is on it it's just such an infinitely long mountain I have got a picture somewhere I'm going to show everybody who doesn't know about Sigil what it looks like. Because if you've not seen it, it is pretty weird. Pretty wild, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is it this book? You could show Pentar's really bad drawing from her letter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pentar did a drawing of it as well. Oh, I can't even find it. I'm really annoyed now. This is what happens when you just impromptu do stuff and don't even think about it. Oh, never mind. Whatever. <laughs> it's oh, cool though. No, it's this book. Sorry, I've got so many Planescape books. So that's yeah. in the middle. Look, so it's just this really weird mountain that goes up and up. So you're actually heading towards this, and morning is sort of um, it's getting away from Anti Peak, and the sky is mm -hmm. lightening as you come up on this um. You can see black smoke rising up into the air as you head towards it. And when you do get nearer, it's just a small compound. Um, there's sort of like a dead scrub around. So you could probably try and take cover for a bit and grab a rest. Um, and there's, um, it's just a two-story building. with uh, It's a, like a stone building. There's a watchtower. Mm -hmm. And there's a fence around the outside, um, like sort of a low wooden fence. And there's some wooden outhouses sort of attached onto it as well. And you can see these riders going into this building. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Pentar runs them into the, the, the brush mm -hmm. to, to be hidden. Mm -hmm. and, and stops and sits down so they can hop off and then Wild Shapes back to regular form so she can talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, Mercy and Lyra come up and then about a bit later, Gil trots up. <laughs> <laughs> and his shoes are very dirty now. This lum is like wheezing. <laughs> oh, it's out of shape. No. Oh no. Uh, I just imagine like as as the llama like like you know up what like just comes up to the group. Lyra's gonna be like, does it have a name? <laughs> and she'll like look at it and like be like dig into her bag and get a little piece of granola. And she'll like gesture to the to the little lot with the, like a little granola in her hand, and she'll just like prompt it to like take it. Yeah, that llama first of all loves you and thinks you're like its best friend. So it pulls a full on Miga and just like puts your entire hand in your in its mouth, it's just, like stretches its forward like possibly long, and just goes like. Mouth around like your forearm, oh. and then slowly drags off your hand. Oh, that's lovely. Um, hey, oh, and she'll just like dig into her bag again, get a little handkerchief, and just like start to wipe off like this, and just be like, lovely, really adorable. Mercy <laughs> swoops in immediately to help you with that situation. <laughs> <laughs> And like as he's doing that, like Gil's just throwing his legs over the side and like hopping off of him, which takes almost no distance. <laughs> he just stands up and the llama just like walks walks from between his legs a little bit. Yeah, an adult that was riding.
riding around one of those like remote control the the little kid animal carts that you oh. see in the mall. <laughs> he's no, he's uh. not quite that tall, but yeah, it's it's pretty sad. <laughs> the minute he stands up, Ponza just like <laughs> vanishes. He's very tired. Oh. Pentar, can you do a history check for me? Yes. <clears throat> Seventeen. Ooh, excellent. Nice. So you're waiting for everyone to sort themselves out, and you're just sitting looking over at this small compound, and you notice that there's um there's a guard that sort of patrols around, and he is wearing a sort of tabard, and on it is a symbol, and it looks really really familiar. It almost looks like the symbol. It's like a sort of blooming flower. And it reminds you of the symbol that the people that kept you wore, only theirs was more of a mushroom. Mm. But it's really almost identical, apart from it being a flower instead of a mushroom. Oh, Pentar starts, like, hyperventilating and scrambling around on all fours in circles. And, like, just starts muttering to herself and panicking. She's, like, super... It's like she's about to be very loud and screaming, you can tell. She's very freaked out. Mercy rushes over to Pentar... And just kind of like leans down. I was like, "Hey, hey, it's okay. What's wrong?" Uh, you're trying to talk to her, but she's just like, like opening her cloak and like muttering into it. Like there's, and you could see inside of her cloak, there's all these different mushrooms like lining the inside of her cloak, and she's clearly talking to them. And like, they're talking back, and she's just like, "They're here. They're here. They're gonna, they're gonna get me again. It's gonna happen again. We have to go. We have Guys, to go." There's something wrong with Pentar. Um, Miga becomes distressed, but reaches into her bag to find the, uh, let me see what color it was, uh, the magenta mushroom that Pentar gave her a little while back, and goes, look, look, it's okay, I have this. Pentar just, like, smacks it out of her hand, which is very unusual for her to do to Miga. Just, like, <laughs> smacks it, and she's like, and she just goes back to, like, muttering. It's like you can't even communicate mm. with her. She's just been... gets very upset. She picks oh. up her mushroom indignantly and puts it in her bag. <laughs> um, Levity, when what we're... are you going to do? Um, Levity just kind of like, um, just kind of like, just like, Pentar, it's okay. And here's, we'll take care of them. Don't worry. We won't let them take you again. Make mm. sure we don't take, take you. She's almost just like a, a freaked out animal at this point. And she just starts trying to, she just like, is like, what, what do I do? What do I do? And um, she looks around to see if there's any other, like, fungi maybe growing, like, that aren't on her body, if there's any around. Um, you could do investigation or nature. Yes, I will do one of those things. 19. Um, you... I'm rolling good right now. Yeah, you... <laughs> oh, yeah you're rolling good. You do not see any fungus. Uh, oh no, she, uh, she's just like, she's like, I don't know, I don't know who to talk to, I don't know what to do. Lyra's gonna be like, everyone just, just give her space, just, just give her some space, hold on, and she'll reach into her bag and pull out the bag of mushrooms that she collected off of that one really weird dude in the, in the one temple, <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> and she'll, she'll be like, Pentar, will, will these help? And she'll like, just like, reach out gingerly towards her, not to like, show her any harm or anything and like just pass it to her just or put it in front of her and see if uh, that'll help no pentar hisses at you but she she um she scrambles over to like the dankest looking like dank uh <laughs> looking plant <laughs> i'm dankest, dankest looking plant is what came to mind <laughs> the dankest looking plant that she can see <laughs> wants to do speak with plants okay and and speak with it <laughs> yeah um so she <laughs> she casts speak with plants to the dank plant and uh tries to to ask it she's just like who are these people are these who tell me about these people so the dank plant is like <laughs> dude <laughs> dude i don't know i don't know man oh, no. <laughs> i'm so sorry Thank i don't know you. why that came to mind <laughs> The plant is just like, dude, they, they get the robots and, oh, dude, they just take them in there. 
Just the robots? Nothing else? I see people coming in and out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the plan is Keanu Reeves in Point Break. Yeah. <laughs> are, they, are they carrying pizza boxes? Like... <laughs> so, Pentar calms down a little bit because in her brain and the mushrooms that she thinks are talking to her on her body are just like, no, it's not them. It's not them. And she calms down and she like goes back over to everybody else and she she looks ashamed at Miga and gives her another mushroom, like, shamefully. What color is that? Roll a d20. All right. Ooh, I got a nat 20. Ooh. Oh, it's an <laughs> olive. Yeah, use that on the mushroom. It's an yeah. yeah. olive colored mushroom. mushroom. I will save this for later. It's a very uh, nice mushroom. I it's very good. Terrified. That means nothing to me. All of you're full of <laughs> lies and tricks. So I will. Uh, Miga looks at it, and she does like greens and blues. So she looks at it, and then like gives Pentar like a little side eye. And then, like, carefully, very carefully puts it in her bag instead of <laughs> throwing it on the ground. Like, oh. Would. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's going to take a while. It's going to take more than a mushroom. I know. She, <laughs> that. she was having a panic attack. Um, oh. she, she looks at everybody and she's like, I talked, I talked with that guy over there. And she points at the dank plant. And <laughs> she's just like, these, these people, they don't, they don't take me. They won't take me, but they take Modron's. Mm-hmm. And, and they go in and out. That's all I know. That's all I was able to find out. I can, we can sneak in maybe and see if we can get a better view. We should at least take care of that that man up there. The uh, kind of gestures at the uh, watchtower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could sneak in after taking care of him. I can light it on fire. Oh. <laughs> okay, Nejma. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back to my own character. <laughs> Maz, you said it was a uh, two-story building, right? Yes. It's like, mm-hmm. I can try and as quietly as I can climb up there and, you know, take care of him. And hopefully he won't alert his friends. I guess if you don't want to use fire, that's fine. Oh, well, if, if things go badly, use fire. Okay. Um, Mercy, can you roll... Do you have insight proficiency? <laughs> no. Just roll the straight insight. Eat. Oh, you're just like shuffling away from the mushrooms and you're trying to watch what this guard is doing and you just can't work out what his uh, pattern is at all. I'm upset that Miga is upset and so I'm just over by Miga. I'm like, Pentar didn't mean anything. Miga just like... Like, you know, if you when you're little and you get scolded and you're just like, <laughs> oh, oh, I, I look on the ground to see if there's like a pebble or something mm-hmm. and I pick it up and I put it in Miga's hair. Oh, oh. okay. Oh. Miga's a little happier now. Oh, <laughs> oh. I feel so bad. But... <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I'm going to give you inspiration for moving outside of Mercy's comfort zone. Oh, it was a you really smooth with... pebble, but okay. <laughs> so covered in dirt, probably. It was Yay. from the ground. Yeah. Aw, inspiration. So, yeah. I, I like to yeah. imagine that, like, she has it between, like, two fingers and is just like... <laughs> <laughs> done it. <laughs> like, poke it in there. Yeah, just like... <laughs> or oh, she's used the mage hand to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So maybe, Levity, if you climb up there, you can at least get a closer look. Oh, yes. There should be no problem. As long as I'm... Hopefully I'm not spotted on the way there, but I can... De- if It's not tall enough, so... I can probably climb up there. Okay, so you going to sneak over past the guard? Um, before that, I'm going to um, kind of um, create a little minor illusion in the opposite direction I'm coming from. Oh, excellent! Of a yeah. Modron, like just like a, it can't move. It can't move, but it's just like a Modron just standing there, kind of still. And if hopefully he'll 
You'll see I it. will press to digitate some sounds mm-hmm. to bolster the illusion of the Modron going beep. <laughs> Since I've learned how to speak Modron. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, fluent in Modron. You hear a um, shout from the tower and then about three or four figures come out of the compound and heads towards your illusion. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and just like dash to that Okay. To that watchtower and then climb up. Okay. Um, roll some acrobatics or athletics, whatever you're best at. All right. It's um. I will use my athletics because I can use my belt of the uh, monkey to kind of give me. Oh, that will give you so... advantage. Or not advantage. It gives me double proficiency with it to climb things with my um, athletics. I'll use that. Oh, does it? Is that one of the things on it? I remember it being like an action to make your tail. Oh, that's for the tail. And stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's for the tail thing. Yeah. It was a. It's an item out of um, the Xanthar's Lost Notes. Mm. Oh, so. uh, Lost Notes. I haven't got that. To yeah. Hand. But, I, know you, um, I know you sent it to me. But anyway, mm-hmm. what did you get? I got a 15. Nice. Yeah. You. So the rest of you watch as like these um, figures go over to where the Modron is. And like one of them goes to grab it and his hand just goes through. And then they're just like all really concerned and confuddled as the illusion breaks and dissipates. And um, they've not noticed Levity scrambling mm-hmm. up the tower. Um, if I'm up there, I'm going to just kind of um, ready a strike and then just kind of like do like a little whistle at him from like hanging on the edge of it. Okay, dokie. Since it's just you and him, we won't roll initiative. You can just go first and we'll take turns. All right. Um, um, make an attack on him as he comes over to see what the noise is about. All right. Uh, let me just double check something with one of my new level five things before I do this. Do, 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 do. Okay, yep. I'll make that hit. Let me see. Then... Ooh, crit. Ooh, nice. Yay! Yes. How much damage? That is going to be... Plus four, five, eight. So one of the dice is maxed, remember? Yep. Um, eleven. No, thirteen points of damage. Oh, you, you knocking him out or killing him? I just knocked him out. I was gonna stunning strike, but like now, now that he's out, I'll. Yeah. Oh yeah. He just comes over to look, and he's just like he's sort of like you're here, and he just sort of looks over, and you just go dunk on the back of his neck, mm-hmm. as. And he just sort of like slumps and you can climb into the tower or climb back down. It's your choice. I am going to spend a little bit of time of taking his uniform. Oh, okay. That's and then just little... tie him up. Mm-hmm. And then come back. No problem. So you now have a guard uniform. It's like yep. a chain shirt. There's a shield. There's a tabard with this symbol on. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. He won't be saying anything, but I got this. This uniform. Do we need to? I can... If we have any ways, if someone's convincing, I can try, but... Try and become one of them. I'm good at forming. Yeah, and Petentar, now you see this tabard up close. It's definitely... Um, the origins of the symbol are... It looks very, very like the people that had you. Very like it. But it's, yeah, it's a flower, not a mushroom. Yeah, Pintar, in realizing this, like, when she's examining it, she's, like, holding it and sniffing it judgmentally mm. and then being, like, just throwing it back at Levity. Mm. Like, good. Yeah, you can, tell, you can tell that it's, the mushroom symbol is clearly inspired by it. Mm. Definitely. So I, I definitely, um, Pintar's, like, whoever are... are if you go in there in this uniform, I want to come with you. I'll turn into my cranium rat form and hide on you, but I want to come too, because I want to see more about these people. Oh, that sounds sounds good. Nice to have another set of eyes in there. It's better than going alone. So she wild shapes into cranium rat and hops on Levity's shoulder. Um, yeah. For the benefit of your shapes, I can say that while Levity's doing this and you're all sort of watching the compound and planning things out, you can probably all have got short rest. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, 
when Lemony puts the um, the uniform on, she's going to use uh, disguise self, disguise self as that guard. Okay. And she'll just be like, if you see something that looks like this, please do not punch me or shoot me or do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we're trying to infiltrate and get in, I could perhaps uh, shape, go back into my Modron form uh, mm. disguise and I could pretend that or we could pretend that I was apprehended or captured. Oh, that sounds oh, sounds delightful. Yeah, Pintar squeaks and claps her little rat hands. <laughs> Cute. Yes. So precious. Right. Should we have I a love my of... rat child? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are we planning to do once we get in? Um, best case scenario, uh, we're able to sneak in find where they have the captured Modrons Mm -hmm. um, and let them loose. Mm -hmm. And the rest Um, of our friends that are outside? um, I mean, I could... need a way to get them in. Open the gates or unlock the door at the right time, maybe. No. It's been a while since I've done acting, so... So for the best. Lyra, do um, insight. Insight? All right. Okay. Oh, that's a nat one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're just rummaging in your bag. Um, <sighs> can I get one from Gil as well, actually? I don't even know why I'm looking it up because I have nothing in Insight, so it's a 13. <laughs> 13. <laughs> I was like, I was really scrolling. I was like... So, <laughs> Lyra's next to you rummaging in her mom bag and these, the rest of them are just trying to plan how to get in. And you're sort of like watching um, the guards and while you've been resting, you think you've got it figured out how this guard patrols? Uh, it right. seems at this time of day there only seems to be one guard in the tower, which you know Levity is dispatched, and another guard that's just walking around the compound, and it probably takes him about 30 minutes to get around the whole way. Uh, Gil keeps chewing on the grass that he found side of the road that Pintar was talking to earlier, <laughs> and he'll just kind of oh, be no! like... Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. I don't think anyone else works here. <laughs> I think they're short handed tonight. Do you think they're short handed? I am so hungry. <laughs> oh man. No. I just. <laughs> Lyra hands him an apple from her bag, and it's just like, I don't know if that's correct but let's just like stay focused stay focused (laughs) yeah i think i think that they're shorthanded this this guy's been marching for oh man it's been like days we've been out here and i think maybe every (laughs) i see him every 30 minutes clockwork just like clockwork like the little robot men 30 minutes one two three (laughs) oh should we wait (laughs) Lara will like grab yeah (laughs) just grab him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He like just hangs out behind a rock and like tries to quietly eat his apple. And he's like, my mouth is so sweet right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me, guys. I don't do I don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like yeah, while Skill's doing that, um Levy's just kinda like doing these actors like <clears throat> yes, yes. <clears throat> And it's kind of like getting, getting into the park. Is she like doing like little, little stretches? Like, Arr! little stretches, just kind of like, yes, I'm here. Yes, yes. No, <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> just like doing vocal uh, or uh, what is it? Exercise. She's like, how now, brown cow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while while Levity yeah. is doing that, Pentar quick, quickly scrambles off Levity and goes in like, like boops her snoot on Miga, like climbs up on Miga and boops her on the cheek and then runs back to oh. Levity and crawls in her coat. Oh, oh. Miga likes this a lot. Um, 
<laughs> you also noticed that um, S34N has just sort of like been dragging at the back of like, like he's sitting, but he's got his back completely to the compound. He won't look at it. Hmm. Wait, is he not on my head anymore? He's sort of like climbed off when you were doing the mushroomy thing, and he's yeah, just oh, sort of okay. like, and he's sort of like got his little arms folded, or as folded uh, as they can be around his big round body, and they're just sort of like like this. <laughs> uh, Mika goes next to him and like kind of like squats down, does the same thing, goes, "What's my and oh, little buddy?" He says, "Mika, two, what is?" Fear. Oh. <laughs> do you, uh, do, do oh, you know what this is? Um, Miga looks confused. Cause she's not really good with words, but she's like, sometimes when I get scared, my tummy gets real tight. Do you feel your tummy is tight too? I don't know if I have a tummy Mika too but and he sort of like leans slightly to one side and his big eye looks up and he's like I think I am scared Mia gives him like a little pap on top of his head a little pap and goes you don't have to be scared because I am very good at battle and I protect you. I have many battle treasures. And then immediately begins dumping them out to show him. And like oh. sifting them in the dirt. Like all of her little cogs that she took from like the other Modrons. Uh, he... And then is like... A little panel opens on him and out tumbles a half-eaten packet of shift spice. And also like three cogs. And he's like treasure yeah Mika's like yes treasure and then she's like I can't it's look, clearly looking for the eyeball <laughs> uh oh <laughs> oh no, oh, no. <laughs> we, we just we just gotta get one here and pretend nothing happened <laughs> yep yep we just have to like <laughs> figure this out oh god <laughs> uh, is like looking through the bag and she knows that she has like a lot of stuff in there because it's a bag of holding and it's like digging in and she's like oh my most important one is in here it's in here somewhere i just have to find it and continues to sift through the bag um lyra's gonna be like Mika, can i can i ask your help i have all of these crayons in my <laughs> bag that i don't know what to do with them all. oh and i have paper and she'll like go and like really like freak out like just be like ripping out paper out of her notebook <laughs> uh miga like starts like putting her stuff back in is has completely forgotten about what she was doing before <laughs> but now she has drawing sticks so uh, immediately begins to draw pictures um of various things as she is now completely distracted yeah Lyra breathes a heavy sigh of relief and leans over to Levity and she's like, we need, we need, we need to find a, you know, a, a, you, you know what it, and she'll be like, hey, yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll find one. Sure right, we'll find do one. it before she murders us all. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lyra's biggest fear. She's, she's just like, oh no. Those who have placated. Well, maybe we should probably get going. I am the da most dangerous person in this party, yeah. as no, no, we, no, have, yeah. we have found. This is like a yeah. countdown. This is a countdown. We want her to be as angry as possible when there's a when there is a fight. Yeah. And not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say we just go in mm -hmm. when this guy is on the other side of the building, and if we get caught, uh, guard levity captured some people outside, and yep. a Modron. Mm -hmm. yep. I think I'm going to be a Modron just in case they like take. If they capture me, they take me to where the Modrons are, and then we yeah, find I'll, it. Yeah, um, Levity will kind of put like a um a makeup like blood thing on her neck just in case we get caught. Mm -hmm. It's like this Modron, this Modron like attacked me, and I'm here to bring it. So, yeah, let's right. do it. Gil's like hyper focusing on the wall and like counting the guard's <sighs> step, and like the moment 
that he that he sees the guard turn the corner he's like (laughs) and he'll like and before you guys go he'll like he'll he'll put his hand on mercy's upper arm and just like look at her he's like my mouth is really wet (laughs) at that moment he'll count he'll he'll cast um aid (laughs) so uh so mercy um levity and i guess pentar is going with levity so the three of them are going to get aid um lasts eight hours so it's hard to waste it um uh by um yeah yeah your your maximum hit points increased by five Oh, good. Nice. 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 I, need those. I need those. I need those hit points. You get nothing else, but. That, I mean, that's. <laughs> you that's, get that's, that and the I'm... knowledge that Gil's mouth is really wet. <laughs> God. At what cost? I mean, five temps is good. Yep. There you go. All right. Five temps. Okay. All right. Time to sneak in. So you head up to the door. Mm hmm. Are you just going to knock and, or just try and open it and work your way in, or how would you like to approach this building conundrum? Um, for all three of us, it's going to be, yeah, I will, we'll do the, uh, the prisoner trick and just kind of like, mm-hmm. I'll just bang on the door. It's like, I right, let me in. You hear the sliding of, um, some bolts and as you look at this, uh, this is a wooden double door, and it's got very recent iron um, reinforcements put on it. Like the hinges are new, and um, they sort of swing inside. And there are two um, guards inside, opening the doors one each. And they look a bit mm. confused, and they're like, "Thought you was up in the tower, mate." Yeah. So he, I just like hold the spot where I put like the makeup blends, like. That's one of those, I saw one of those goddamn things down there. Tried to grab it, it n- nicked me in the nicked me in the neck, and I have it right here though. Bring it in at least. And suddenly this smell hits you, and you yeah. smelled it a little before when you were fighting the Modrons in Heart's Faith. It's just this f- horrible metallic, but rotting smell at the same Ooh. time. And there's just the smell of chemicals filling the air as well. Mm. And you can sit, like, behind the guard, you can see, like, um, vats with bubbling liquids in. And you can also hear this bizarre screaming. And then you realise you've never heard a scream like this before. It's the sound of a Modron screaming. Ooh. Yeah. And as you walk in and they let you in, the floor under your feet crunches as you step on tiny springs and gears that are littering the floor. And there's like black stains that you realise is um, Modron blood. You've seen it before as well when you were fighting the Modrons. Yeah. Levity's kind of like, she's not showing it like to people, but like I think probably Pentar can probably hear her breathing. Kind of like she's not used to like going to like these settings like she used to just going to like festivals and like that so she's trying to keep her composure as much as possible and try and figure out where the noise is coming from so she can take the uh the one disguised as mercy i mean um mercy disguised as two act like i know where i'm going the screaming is coming from your left and as you look in that direction you see that there are chains hanging from the ceiling and there are just these um, amorphous, fleshy blobs with like singular large eyes hanging from hooks on these chains. It's like you just hear it like under, but like this is awful. Ugh. And there are tables to the left, uh, to the right of you, just tables with loads of cutting implements, tools. There's vats, there's forges. It's like a sort of um, foundry works. And Mm -hmm. there's like metal plating that's parts of Modrons and 
Modron arms and wings and legs scattered around on these tables as well. Okay. And there are, you can see um, several workers at the tables. One of the tables has got a duodrone, so it looks like Mercy with the two parts. And they are sawing its leg off and it's screaming as they're doing this. Naz! Yeah, you just. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> pissed after this. Yeah, oh, like you. I think, yeah, like. I think, yeah, both Mercy and probably, like, Pentar can just kind of hear, like, just Levity's, like, knuckles just kind of crack. Like, this is extremely upsetting. Yeah, like, Pentar's, is, like, um... trying to cover her little rat ears. Like, mm. Mercy is doing the opposite of levity and not trying to keep composure because i feel like a modron would freak out in this mm -hmm. environment um but as she's doing that she's looking around and i have two questions do there look like is does this look like one big room and then that room branching off are there a bunch are there any other rooms or doors that are closed so and how many people do we see you see including the guards there are 10 people Okay. This is one large room Ooh. with lots of tables with the modrons hanging from chains in. To the back of the room in the centre, there is a corridor, and you can see that there are doors along the corridor going back. And then on the left-hand side of this corridor is a set of stairs going up to the second floor. So there's like a sort of... The second floor is like a sort of mezzanine level. So the back of the building is two levels, and then there's this big front section that goes up through both stories. Mm -hmm. I whisper to Mercy, it's like, can you do that again? Disguise yourself? Um, beep. <laughs> and just, <laughs> why don't you go further in disguised as this, and I'll come out and okay. let the others in, unlock the door so the others can create okay. a distraction or something. Cause I can't, I can't, st this is, this is awful. Um, all right. Is there a way for us to kind of like duck into a corner unseen and I'll shift into guard and. You, you are directed to leave the Modron levity um, somewhere on the right. There's sort of some pens that are holding a couple of. I mean, you've never seen a Modron look scared, but somehow these look terrified monodrones. Hmm. And you could probably sort of, like, hide behind the pen. Okay. Alright. Um, so I guess I can take on the disguise as guard. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to scope out the building more mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. figure out what we're coming up against. So I guess I can head up maybe to the second floor yeah okay um i kind of look at the little rat and it's like do you want to go with her or do you want to go with me pintar is pintar scuttles down and climbs on mercy she feels right. like she feels like she'd help more with like mercy's more delicate <laughs> how dare <laughs> i am no i am i am <laughs> help <laughs> yeah um yeah so i'll um i'll leave you two and i'll give the others the signal and then open the door and we'll get rid of these people yeah i'll leave so you deposit the modron mercy who turns into you you, you again like the guard you and then head out and they're like all right uh, you. How long you got in your tower shift? Couple of hours, still in it. Yeah, I'll head up back. I'll head back out. All right. Let us know if you need anything, Carter. All right. God damn thing, shut. You know, just like shuffle off. Yep. And then, um, mercy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like. I guess the guards just saw that guard leaves, so yeah. I'd like to kind of sneak behind them and up the stairs. Do you want to roll stealth for me? <sighs> yes. Ah. Eleven. 
they are only commoners, so <laughs> 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 they're not gonna. I don't need to roll anything to have their passive notice you. Um, yeah, you shuffle past them. They're busy bolting the doors back together. And you can sneak up the stairs. So as you go up, it's like... I'm going to show you the picture. The top level is like... There's a sort of balcony. And then there's a load of rooms. Okay. Um, do the rooms have like closed doors or open doorways? Um, so there are doors on all of them. Right. I guess I'll go up to the nearest one and listen. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, in this room, you can hear a faint snoring. Okay. The sn like multiple snoring or the snoring oh, no. of a single person? I looked at the wrong part, sorry. The closest to the stairs is different rooms. You can hear in this room. Um, oh, no, you still hear a snoring. It's okay. Okay, cool. So what's in there is snoring. All right. I tiptoe over to the next door and listen. I'm basically going to do this to all the doors. Okay. <laughs> so the second door, you can hear bubbling like um chemicals in a cauldron or a vat bubbling away and in the third one you can hear sawing um and then there is another there's a little corridor that sort of cuts back and uh these rooms in one of them you can hear a woman talking there's sort of four other rooms here yeah one of them you can hear a woman talking and in another <clears> room you can hear it sounds like something's on fire. Oh. Weird. Mm. I like to think as I go to each door, I'm like holding the little pentar cranium rat, and we're both mm. listening. Yes. <laughs> at the doors, yeah. Um, What is the woman talking? What sort of stuff is she saying? It's a very low level, sort of like a sort of muttering to oneself. So it's not very clear what's being said. Can I, um, is, is there a gap underneath the door to where I could stick my head under and see anything? You can sneak under. Yeah, I would like to do that. In the one where the woman's muttering. Yes. So you sneak in and this is, it looks like a sort of uh, bedroom of some sort. Um, but the woman that is muttering is a barrier. You've seen them around in Sigil. They are half goats, half human people. So she is at a desk, so her bottom goat half is standing at this desk and she's writing uh, in a book of some sort and muttering to herself as she writes. Um, can I climb up on a shelf or something and see what she's writing? Mm -hmm. She's, um, as you sort of you can hear her saying, we're so close, I've almost figured oh, wait. it out. I can't even read, sorry. I can't read, so I don't know what she's writing. <laughs> yeah, crap. Reading's important, people. Yeah. I, I'd like to think that, like, your cranium route form can read, but, like, any of your other forms are like, I don't know, man. <laughs> no, I'm not that lucky. <laughs> so, no. Never mind, go ahead with the muttering, but I can't read whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, she's like, I she's saying, oh, I'm so close. I've almost got it. And she's muttering things about um, the Modrons and what parts they've taken off and what's going on. She's like, she's basically talking to herself as she writes to organize Pentar, her thoughts. Pentar wants to do something really badass and like kind of jump down and as she jumps wild shape back into her form and then land with her hand on that the Bariar's head. Mm-hmm. And just be like, what are you doing here? And oh. she's like, wants to prepare to cast Feign Death on this Bariar. Mm -hmm. Or if that's optional on someone. I think they have to be willing, though. So maybe uh, something more useful. Read the spell out. Or choose a spell that you're going to use. Uh, probably Hold Person. Okay. She'd like to cast Hold Person on the Bariar. Okay. So cool. 
do you hold the person before you cast? Like, I'm sorry, before you ask um, the question? Well, she wants to seem like, she wants to like put her hand on her forehead and say that, but prepare to cast it if the barrier tries to leave. Got it. So the barrier is just like really shocked and taken aback by you suddenly appearing and in here. She was so engrossed in her work, she didn't even notice your rat form. And she says, oh, oh, oh my, where did you come from? Who are you? What are you doing here? Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, what are what are you doing here? That's more important. Why do you? What is this? What is that symbol? And what are you doing to the Modrons? I'm researching. I'm just researching. What's it to you? Because this is you're torturing them, and it's not nice. We don't like it. We have a Modron friend now. We don't like it. And they're just robots. Robots, they have feelings too. Don't you hear them screaming? Just a side effect of the process. Pintar is just like, this is the worst person I have ever met. And she's like, who, what, who's the leader here? Is it you? No, there is a, a dustman is in charge, but he's not here at the moment. What's his name? Sathetis. Pintar, like, tries to think of how to spell that and then realizes she can't spell, and she's just like... <sighs> <laughs> he's, well, uh, he's away at the moment. He's gone back to the mortuary for some reason, but uh, he'll be back soon and he'll be very annoyed to find you've got in here. You don't want to upset mm -hmm. him. His bodyguard's in the next room. Mm -hmm. Is... Is are we speaking loud enough to where Mercy could hear this? Um, do perception for me for Mercy. I got a fourteen. Yeah, you can hear. Um, I'm gonna try to jiggle the door open and get inside because I hear Pentar talking to someone. Oh yeah, it's not locked. Okay, yeah. I go in. I close the door behind me. And having heard what they said, um, I'm going to rush forward and also gra maybe grab her arm threateningly and say, would your screams be a side effect? She sort of <laughs> tries to pull away from your grip and roll a strength for me. Uh oh. 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 So 16 minus one is 15. Uh, she's got 16 plus 1, 17. Same. She pulls away from you <laughs> and she goes to bolt for the door. Pentar casts Hold Person since she had prepared it. Okay, please tell us what Hold Person is and what save I need to do and for how much. Uh -huh. um... oh, never mind, I rolled a 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, tell you, I can tell you what it is though. Please um... tell everyone who's watching what Hold Person does in case they don't know. Alright, um... I'm trying to find the text. Uh, choose a humanoid that you can see within range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for the duration. At the end of each of its turns, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. On success, the spell ends on the target. And the duration is concentration up to one minute. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she so. freezes in place. Like, is one of her goat legs is up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is there a window in this room? Oh, that is a good question. There is. Yes, opposite the I door. will go over and open the window, and can I see the bush area where we were hiding? TK, I, I heard it as soon as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We're moving forward. Can I see where my party is hiding? You cannot, as you are now looking out towards the back of the compound, not the front. Oh, bummer. Ah, uh, uh, never mind. Let's uh, go back to Levity, <laughs> who's going um, to rescue the rest of the party. All right, um, Levity's going to go back to the watchtower where that guard is tied up. Yeah. And she'll kind of look at the um, at the uh, the area. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say where my party is. The scrubland. Yes. And kind of motion for them to like make this way, and I'm going to drop a rope for them to climb up to this watchtower. 
The watchtower is separate to the compound. It's not attached mm. to the building. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll um I'll motion for them to kind of like go toward the door, and then I'll leave the watchtower. Okay. So Mega Lyra. Gil, you see levity, make a signal. It's just like a little arrow, like a little like minor illusion arrow, like point toward the door. Mm-hmm. And I'll make my way to the door. Okay. Shall we? So I'll, I'll, I'll look up in the sky and be like, oh, I think, I think that's the signal. I think that's the signal. Oh my, and she'll like... <laughs> tap like I, I imagine she's just like tapping Gil like like this just being like I think that's it I think that's it <laughs> yeah Gil was probably dozing a little bit so he probably needed that he's mm-hmm. probably like and his eyes are like enormous he's just like <laughs> Miga has finished her drawing and would like to share it before going in please share <laughs> yes please Oh, 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 that's the cutest thing ever. (laughs) I bought crayons for this show. I ain't ain't not playing with you. (laughs) 96 cents at Target. (laughs) Other crayon vendors are available. Spells sponsored by Crayola. <laughs> oh, that's the dream. That's the Target. dream. Yeah. Sponsor us. <laughs> I've always wanted to have my birthday party at Crayola, but I'm too old. Uh. So, <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, Miga holds up her drawing and holds it out to to Lyra and is like, "Can you can you hold this, please?" And she'll like reach out and just like you can see. Her looking at it, she'll look back at you and like you'll see like a little tear kind of run down her cheek, and you can see her get very quiet, and she'll be like, "I will hold on to this for as long as you need me to," and she'll just put it in her her notebook, and you'll watch her put it in her bag, and she'll go like this and put her hands on both sides of your face and be like, "You are more amazing than you know." And she'll Aww, be like, thanks. let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Good yep. Good night. Oh my god. <laughs> so are you gonna meet them at the door, Levity? Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright, I am going to kind of like as nonchalantly as like possible, like I know what I'm doing, like unlatch the door. Mm-hmm. And kind of like let them in. Okay. And the um the two guards that were sort of like in charge of the door were like You're back already, cut what? Who are these Burks? What's going on? Oh, they're you can hear the mercenaries come in. Mercenaries? What are you on about? Get more Modrons, you didn't hear? I thought they told you. No one tells me nothing. Well, they're here now, and they need a bit. There's they run a strict time table to get more Modrons before the next experiment. So, hurry up and let them in so they can do their job. Um, do deception for me. All right, let me just do, do, do. deception. Cool. Excellent. That was a twenty-one. Oh wow. They sort of like look at each other and they just look a bit confused and then I just step aside and you go in. Yep. And like, so um, Amiga's got um, holding hands with S34N and they're like, you got a kid, but the kid's already got one. Bloody hell, she must be good. Amiga just goes, I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> and S34N is, he's like, I just goes, Wide as he walks into this scene. Oh no! 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 O
<laughs> I oh. completely forgot. I for some reason oh. I thought we were gonna start upstairs. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been like, can't come with us. Oh. <laughs> and he just, so starts... I guess, oh. I guess Mega wouldn't yes. have known either. Yeah, he just oh, starts man. shaking. You can feel his little fork hand vibrating as he's I'm shaking. I'm ready. <laughs> can can Mega oh, see like all of the stuff in the background as well? Yeah. Uh, she just starts screaming in terror. Because <laughs> I'm oh sure this God. looks horrific to a small child. Yeah, it's, oh it's, 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 I'm oh not no. going to describe it again because you all seemed quite traumatized the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, no. Lyra's going to grab Miga and shield her eyes and be like, like just shaking herself. Like she, she feels very disturbed by what she's seeing. She's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. And even, even though she's saying this, she can't even comprehend what she's seeing. Um, Levity just kind of looking at that, at Lyra and just kind of like, just kind of making eyes like, what do we do? And, and she's going to be like, just flabbergasted. Like she's just going to be like looking wide eyed and being like, what? is this place and she's just gonna i don't know she's speechless she's just speechless she doesn't know what is there is. still screaming yes oh yeah um gil was probably like striding in front of everybody like he oh likes to do and like they're screaming and he's like looking around and there's like stuff hanging off the wall <laughs> the smell is just unbelievable the smell is horrible it's like coating his tongue and he just like turns around like super slowly over his shoulder and looks Lyra like straight in the eye and he's like totally sober like <laughs> eyes as big as dinner plates and he's like burn it yeah you, yeah, you kind of see you kind of see Levity, Levity kind of really wants to fight right now but like she just doesn't burn want burn it and like the mo <laughs> who how many people are in here uh, so with the two guards, there are ten in total. So there's like eight workers milling around. And as you're looking, and that one of the workers bumps into another, and he drops a vial, and it smashes on the ground. And it's like, oi, watch what you're doing, you burk! If that had been full, that would have gone off. This place will go up. Watch it. And the, the one that dropped the vial's like, it's all right. It was, it was just ink. All right, you know, I was just taking some ink upstairs for her to do her notes. Um, we're upstairs, yeah, and Miga is screaming. <laughs> yeah, do we so that? as she does Ooh. that, uh, Mercy will shift back into herself, um, grab, try grabbing the woman again, I guess, because she escaped, and just say, "Do you hear that? Retribution has arrived." Your men downstairs <laughs> are screaming like little girls. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? Why are you doing this to these Modrons? Um, can she talk while she's under hold person? Uh, it doesn't specify no speaking from what I saw. What condition? I... Did it impose paralyzed? Um, let me see. I think it was paralyzed until, uh, but if it's been, it's probably been a minute by now, I assume. Um, Oh, so I can have... read, so I I could also like grab her notebook, um, and oh, read right. what she was writing. So yeah, it's paralyzed for the duration, yeah. so she can't move or speak. And but as this wears off, and she just starts stammering, and she's just like, but but the they're just doing research. We're just researching. Researching what? Researching why? I I'm I'm just trying to figure figure this out. Figure what out? So are you flicking through the book as well or are you just holding on to it? Um yeah, if she doesn't say anything uh helpful, I uh Mercy sighs in frustration and grabs the book and speed reads. Okay. So flicking through it, you see that um, she's joined this group called the Tekarim. She's not really a high up or anything. They are allowing her to perform the studies because it's benefiting them. Um, she is work just working on 
taking the, pe the pieces off the Modrons, working on keeping them alive so that the pieces don't dissolve, and um, yeah, she's working on these experiments that just bond parts of the Modrons to soldiers to make them more efficient. So yeah. they'll bond wings onto one so that it can fly, or they'll bo bond Modron legs onto another one so it can just walk immense distances. And that's what she's doing. And so the Takarim are using her skills to make a very powerful army. And there, uh, you can gather from I the notes that. as well that there are other bases. There's no, especially note of one in Gehenna. Right. Well, I mm. take the notebook. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, downstairs. <laughs> well, is... yeah. Uh -oh. Do we want to? Do we want to head downstairs to meet up with them? Because Pintar's like heard Miga scream and is like, "Yeah, if yeah, I guess if we're hearing Miga screaming, we yeah. we run downstairs." So when Pen as soon as Mercy moves to head downstairs pentar since we had a short rest can wild shape again mm -hmm. and immediately turns into the giant centipede and barrels down the stairs mm -hmm. <laughs> mercy follows and she's like ew 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 <laughs> <laughs> um as you sort of do that one of the doors flings open and out comes another worker and you can see behind them there is a figure on a bed and their legs have been replaced with modron legs is it, um, can we tell whether it is a male or female figure? Uh, do insight. Seven. You're not sure. There's just, um, bloody stumps with these bonded legs on them. Alright. Well, we, just... we said we'd save the people too. So. But also Miga's screaming. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I feel like I'd go make sure Amiga's okay first and then come back for the other person. Um, so downstairs group, what's going on? So Amiga's screaming. Can I see the source of any chemicals? Like the chemical smell and stuff? Is everything just coated <laughs> in chemicals? There are vats scattered around the room that are bubbling. Um, yeah, Gil is, like, his eyes are, like, wide and, uh, though sober, a little unhinged, and he's just, like, looking straight at Lyra, and then he looks at a vat and, like, looks back. He's like, we have to burn it all. And he casts Searing Smite <laughs> at one of the vats. Whoa. <laughs> all right. Then. Can you remind me what Searing Smite does, please? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um... Technically, it's next time you hit a creature with a uh, melee weapon attack. So even though he's like it, it's not like a firebolt bolt or anything. You can still see like his hands like start getting that fire and stuff, and he's like moving towards that vat. Okay. Mm. Or any any workers that are close, any vats that are close to a worker. So it's fine. as he starts moving towards the vat, one of the um, workers throws a vial towards him and mm. uh, let's see if it hits where it hits it's oh, in that no, one so the vial just goes into the vat and these mm -hmm. chemicals bubble up and the glass dissolves and chemicals splush over the side of this vat okay you know what yeah when he sees that um vial dissolve in the vat he's actually gonna like think about that searing smite how big is this vat? Uh, like question. a sort of cauldron -y thing on the floor. How heavy is this vat? Ooh. Are you thinking of perhaps tipping it? I'm thinking of kicking it over, yeah. Do a strength check to see if you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to apologize to everyone in advance. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, Gil. Oh no, Gil. Oh, and I've got a plus three, too. Oh no. Oh no, did you not? Did you... It's a 21. Oh, okay, good. That's what I'm. Yes. You... I was like, don't worry, Mega never skips arm days. So. 
<laughs> well, it's leg day technically, but yeah, he's yeah. gonna kick yeah. this vat. So Gil launches himself at this vat, and it's like time slows down, and the worker that threw the vial starts sort of goes no towards him, and this vat just sort of splushes, tips over, and there was this wave of acid just spills out, and it's splashes over the worker and their skin starts dissolving and it washes over a bench and parts of the wood starts to be eaten away and the metal decays and then some of the other workers are just like nope and run out of the door and the guards are just like alarm sound an alarm someone where is everybody and there is just mayhem and panic. What's everyone else doing? Um, I look down the stairs and see the ensuing mayhem, and I'm like, oh, Mika's okay. Um, <laughs> and I run into the room that has the person who's been experimented it's on. It's a female. I am going to grab her. Mm-hmm. Uh cast levitate on myself mm-hmm. push off of- oh wait is there a window in this room there is in this room as well yeah it, all right i'm gonna one. push <laughs> as i'm levitating i'm gonna push off the bed smash through the window and levitate us to the ground nice like, i'm gonna like carry her okay damn mm-hmm. yes um oof, nice good oof. um lira um Lyra is going to instinctually grab Miga and hold her close to her as best as she can to try to get her away from this and away from the acid and away from everything and (laughs) everything that's awful in this world. Um, And she's going to be, she's just going to look at Gil as all of this acid is going around. And can she make it to a door or like safety away from the acid? You, uh, You weren't too far into the room really mm-hmm. so the door is not okay. far behind you so you could probably okay. just turn and book it i don't want to leave like anybody behind uh oh my god nobody's as important as me but like i think Elira's first instinct is to save the child like save miga mm-hmm. um and she's gonna she's gonna pick her up and take her out towards the door and just yell back at gil and be like destroy this awful place as mm-hmm. best yeah, as he's he can. in the room and he's just yelling justice <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. oh and um M- miga has um our sweet robo boy she's like holding him out Better. and i'm, I'm yeah. mad. like his take him are, like, it won't save him so yeah just like yeah, holding him. him and she's screaming <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's mm-hmm. like you didn't know modrons could panic but he is mm-hmm. freaking out here yeah. Mm-hmm. Just imagine like Lyra just like full on just like grabbing Miga and grabbing like the Madra and just like hauling yeah. that like, mom football there. carry. Yeah, but it's yeah. just like under both art and just out of there. She's just like gung ho just get out of there. Penta yeah. and then protect everyone. Stay on Mercy and therefore go out the window or have you That bug was not on me. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh you're like centipeding, aren't you? You're pentapeding. Yeah, I'm so giant boring. giant centipede, so I'm like taking up the entire hallway or like stairwell i guess mm-hmm. i come down and i see that lyra grabbed miga so i like crawl along the wall and come down and kind of wait to see if i'm needed because mm-hmm. i'm i'm down for some destruction if we want to destroy anything mm-hmm. yeah are any of the guards near me like um running toward like some sort of alarm thing like they're going towards something uh, they just seem to be shouting and panicking a bit they're not very bright these two so they're not really sure what to do when there is an emergency yeah, so I'll get right in front of the, um, like, face-to-face with the guard that um, I was next to, mm-hmm. that let, let them in, and just say, just kind of, like, tip my head, like, it was a good show, wasn't it? And then I'll just do a strike on him. Okay. <laughs> I'll punch him. Roll to attack. All right, plus seven. Sixteen. Yeah, that's going to hit him. Um, so that is a nine points of damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you take him out. Um, is there another person, like, within... I'm, I'll go... I'll walk to another person. Yep, there is another the guard same. there. They're both... They were trying to sort of close the doors. 
to stop mm -hmm. everyone getting out. So you've taken one out. So yeah, like once I like knock that guy out, I just kind of like let the disguise go and just kind of like, just kind of like dance run at him and then do another strike. Okay. That is twenty two. Yeah, definitely. With um no six points of damage. Yeah, he is winded and doubled over, and he's just like, oh, it, oh my life ain't worth this, and stumbles <laughs> out of the door. Is is there like another door that they're trying to that someone else is trying to close? No, 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 no. The double doors that um, everyone came in at the front are sort of partially open. That's what okay. they were trying to close. And yeah, you could get through those. Like Lyra's now just like football carrying mom arm in through them. Is there um, anyone else that had been torturing Modrons in there, or did we take care of them? A lot of the workers panicked and ran. Okay. Um, Pentar will just like they she saw. Was, she yeah, was... they saw their co-worker just dissolve in this acid, and they were like noping out. She hangs her centipede head in shame because she didn't get to crunch, and then she just goes outside. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's still a guard that's winded that um, levity attacked. If you want to crunch oh. him, oh, can I climb crunch. up on the ceiling and like crunch, and like crunch. lower myself down and crunch him? Oh wait, him? can I? I my turn wasn't necessarily over, but like oh. I want to stunning strike him. No, that's it. He's stunned. I mean, oh. make a make a con save. Oh, I rolled a three, so he's stunned. So. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. Go get him. Crunch Go get him. It. Um, crunch. 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 Can crunch. I get advantage crunch. on my crunch? That's yeah. What, crunch is. what does that's stunning? What, what condition does stunning strike impose? Um, let me just double check. It is. Um, oh, is he just stunned? Done. It's done. Yep. It's attack rolls it's... have advantage. Good because I just rolled a dirty twenty to crunch Ooh. him. Crunch, yeah. crunch, 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 crunch. crunch. <laughs> so roll some damage. Oh man. Crunch is... damage. Oh, yeah. So that's uh four piercing damage and Oh poison oh. eleven poison damage. Do you want to kill him? Oh yeah, I wanna crunch his head right off, just like <laughs> crunch it off. Yeah, and then just like chew on it. Oh my yes. <laughs> and it's okay. like the poison's like dissolving the head and he's just like mashing it like I'm glad Mercy yeah. jumped out of the window to <laughs> Wow. Okay. Gil Delicious. Nightmare. Gil. Sorry, I was adding the, the head crunching. <laughs> 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 um okay so is everybody else pretty much out of there besides pretty much out of there besides pentar crunching a guard workers have dispersed mm -hmm. modrons are still probably screaming yes still yeah gil doesn't bad. yeah gil doesn't know about the ones in the pens so <laughs> r.i.p um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so if if it's pretty much empty in there, he'll, um... Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what oh, does no. he just say oh, to no. you? What, he's gonna go ahead and... I've got an adventurer's pack, and he's going to, um, pour out, uh, all of his oil mm -hmm. for his lantern. <sighs> And just like whoosh, 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 light up a torch and boom! Oh yeah, I mean, there's loads of chemicals in here. This place yeah, is and, going uh, to and go. he's going to be doing that as he's like backtracking out the door. So he's yeah. gonna just moonwalk out of this inferno. Yeah, Lyra, as you get outside, um, you see Mercy um, levitating around the side of the building. Okay. So you know gonna... that she's okay. She's okay. Okay, so do I know, like, that at this point, does Lyra know that everybody's all right? Or, like, is it, like, just, I just see Mercy and that's all I know? So um, far. you can hear some crunching coming from inside. <laughs> Which I instinctually feel like I would know would be Pentar, so <laughs> I feel like, oh, cool. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna get as far away from the doors as I can and I'm mm. gonna run over. I'm still holding, I'm assuming... Yeah, uh, modern friend and 
mm-hmm. and he got just like, just, um, yeah. yeah football mom just like <laughs> like go over and I'll run over to Mercy and I'm gonna be like are you okay are you okay and then I'll I set me getting them down <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I'm all right there's um I think this might be that night's sister perhaps um and I'm holding the lady with Modron legs. Mm. She's as currently unconscious, but she is alive. Okay, I'm gonna lay on hands the woman if I can put any, mm-hmm. and I'll give her I don't know like five. I'm just gonna like wash it kind of all over the parts that like look harmed, basically. And I'm just gonna heal her as best as I can. Um, I'll give her like I don't know five to stabilize. Probably would be best. Yeah, she's her um, breathing does become easier and a bit of colour comes back to her face. Um, and yeah. as Gil sort of like shuffles backwards out of the door, you can hear <laughs> that weird howling in the distance. Oh. And Mercy does not like yeah, wolves. Yeah, you can see uh, off in the distance uh, the figures are returning from another oh, raid. Oh, cool. We need to get out of here. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. need to leave. And then, Gil, you suddenly hear some small explosions from inside. And the black smoke coming out of the chimney of this place is getting thicker. And there's a, there's a heat coming off now. Oh, we've made a mess. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful mess. Gil doesn't really say anything. He just, like, he had planned to stay there until the screaming stopped. But now he's kind of like... Okay. <laughs> he doesn't say anything, but he does start to like walk with a purpose, like really quickly away. <laughs> we need to go. <laughs> oh, oh, um, does does Gil like see like the group like with Mercy and everybody? Like, are you like moving towards that group? Like, um, in the corner, or are you like just like getting out of? <laughs> to be perfectly honest with his mindset right now, mm-hmm. he's probably like he. It's probably a fast walk at first, and then it's like a full out run away. Okay. Uh, whether the party follows him or not is y'all's. Because mm-hmm. like there's, it's exploding, and he'll and he mm-hmm. actually, you know what? He's gonna start running and say, "It's exploding!" <laughs> <laughs> I just like um, let me just like locks eyes and like, yeah. And just dashes out. <laughs> yeah, Pintar follows, and like when she gets outside, you can see there's like brain matter hanging off of her mandibles. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Um, Lyra, I, I, I'm assuming we'll, we'll see everybody leaving and being like to everyone around her, being like, mm-hmm. "We need to get her out of here. We need to leave. We need to leave now." And mm-hmm. and she'll be like, "Mercy, is can we? Can are you okay to levitate her as we kind of move her forward? Is the spell will the spell be good to last, or do we need to carry um, her? levitate? Can move me up and down, not okay. in not other directions. Other directions. But okay. if you want, and I uh, grab, give you one end of a rope." Okay. Like pull us like a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can gonna... speak to this. It does work. It's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lyra's gonna like look at the rope and be like, "Well, it's our only option." And she's gonna start tying it around you and be like, "Support her as much as you can," and start to like run. <laughs> and well, I guess. Oh no, what's she gonna do with me? She's like gonna be like panicky kind of like so she's gonna make sure like that Mega and everybody can follow her. She's yeah, gonna, I'll like, start to like I guess yeah, Levity can just kind of like ask like you know Mika to get on her shoulders mm-hmm. and, I'll, and she'll run. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mika is still holding yeah. the <laughs> like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's her okay. safety hold. Yeah. <laughs> Levity can also run like forty feet around, so she runs really fast. <laughs> Usain Bolt Usain. over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. I guess yeah. We're just ballooning up, injured, Look it. and running. Yeah. So you get, get out of there. You get a distance away, and sort of like you're starting to get a little out of breath, and you turn and you look, and just as the uh, raiding group gets back, uh, the place just suddenly there's a final huge explosion and it goes up and it engulfs the flames come out and engulf the raiding group as they get to the compound and there is just this huge column of black smoke rising in the air and you're pretty sure you've totaled the place 
And Excellent. that's probably a very good place to stop since we are slightly over. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, thank yeah. you for playing. Yeah. 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 I love that uh, epic explosion. Uh, I can't believe it. Awesome. <laughs> that's insane. I We're got... all traumatized now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nobody gives the group nightmares. Only I give the group nightmares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I looked that's over when. Job. Yeah, like when Mass yeah. was describing all this horrifying stuff, we're all like, <gasps> and TK's like, like, <laughs> oh, no. you were, you were like, smiling. I, know. I do, I, know I get you. so excited. It was so, that part was my favorite. Like, it was so, and not because I'm like messed up or anything. Because <laughs> I love the suffering that's, that's, that's of others. That's unrelated, yeah. but yeah. also that's true. Totally I mean, they're not real people, so, no. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I loved how descriptive it was. I loved mm -hmm. how immersive it was, that it engaged all of my senses. It was mm -hmm. always, always a fun, always a fun thing. Always a, a, a treasure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I treasure your company. <laughs> and we treasure yours. Oh, everyone's smoother than smooth Yoda. <laughs> um uh, let's let's go around, see where everyone's is for the next week, and um yeah, so let's start with you, Shauna. Where Hi, can yeah, we Shana. find you? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, here, um, also doing Waffle Talks for uh, Dice Camera Action. We uh, done some for the uh, Waffles Inc. that happened this weekend. Those are, no spoilers. Uh, will be on... No, no, I don't, I've been good. But yeah, th they'll be on the um, D&D channel, I think, on Thursday before Into the Birdcage at, or on YouTube as well. So that's it. That's pretty good. That's pretty much it for this week. And what's your Twitter? Twitter is Flying Cirrus. What's your pronouns? She, her, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to, like, this is why I write mine out every week, so I know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Shauna. Is there anything else you would like to add? I don't know. It was good. We got through this thing. It was horrifying, but we succeeded, got everything we did, and we yeah. Child didn't get go crazy over not having the Modron anymore. Having, so that's good. <laughs> oh, actually, something you do notice that I missed out: as the compound explodes, the legs on the woman disappear. Oh yeah. Oh. Good. Excellent. Okay. Um, Lisa, where can we find you? What are you up to? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I am Lisa. You can find me on Twitter at MercifulDM. I'm also the host of a podcast called Behold Her about women in tabletop RPGs. And this month's episode is all about uh, the women behind D&D. &D, so the women on the Wizards of the Coast team who produce my favorite game. Um, and so that is at Behold Her Pod. Uh, and you can find a link to the latest episode where I talk. Uh, it is part one. So I talked to three women. Yep. I would love to. Um, I'm TK. Uh, I write spooky stories on the internet. You can find those spooky stories at my Twitter, TK Joins the Fray, or at my website, uh, tkjwrites.com. Um, when I'm not doing this on Thursdays, I'm at WebDM's uh, Twitch playing Land Between Two Rivers, which is a Dark Sun inspired homebrew. It's very fun. I play a uh lizard folk ranger who also sets things on fire and crunches so it's awesome that's it oh they then all our favorite things <laughs> sorry yeah. i muted for a second because my birds were doing the beep boops very loudly they sound like a modron <laughs> march they're yeah. modron <laughs> it's sound effects it's good, like, it's sound good effects. atmosphere mm. beep boop. chloe where can we find you what are you yeah up to? um well, you can find me on the internet at um, t uh, on Twitter uh, at Hey It's Chloe C L O E, um, and then you can find me on Instagram as well at Hey It's Chloe Christine. Um, yeah, right now I'm hoping to do some uh, fan art of episodes that we've had in the past, so I'm working on a few things which I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, just little things here and there. So follow me or find me on the internet to see um, updates on that. I'm probably going to end up drawing uh, Lyra's awesome mastiff because 
I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned for that. Draw but yeah, find me. Um, I will. Oh, you know I will. It's it's happening. It's in the works. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, we'll definitely um, yeah find me on there and say hello and yeah. And do you have pronouns? Oh yes, she and her are my two pronouns. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And I would like to know about my friend and yours. It's Hadil. It's me, Hadil, your friend. My pronouns are your excellent or how dare you speak to me. She and her. Um, you can find me on Twitter at TwittySuch, T-W-I-T-T-Y-S-U-C-H. Um, the same on Instagram and Twitch. And I've been streaming um, some gentle streams on Saturdays. Um, Jurassic World Evolution, which is my dinosaur theme park. And if you come to the stream, you get to name one of my beautiful dinosaur children's. Um, this Thursday is the season two of Trapped in the Birdcage. So if you want to watch Yay! me set things on fire and not take any responsibility for my actions, you should come and watch that. <laughs> Holly is also on it. She's not here today because we don't make anybody play Dungeons and Dragons for 12 hours straight. As much fun as it is, I'm sure it's very exhausting. Um, but yes, it'll be me and Holly and our beautiful Anna Prasa Robinson and the lovely Jimmy Wetzel and the beautifully bearded Chad Quant, Hollywood celebrity, Emmy Award winner. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Emmy <laughs> Award winner. Emmy Award winner. Hollywood celebrity. <laughs> Chad Chad Chadathy Quant. Chadathy. Chadathy Quant. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, this Thursday. Uh, let me scroll down real quick. 5 p.m. <laughs> 5 p.m. Um, yeah, that's that's it for me. Oh. Kayla! <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayla, and my pronouns are she, her, and you can find me on the internet at K-A-Y-N-C-L-I, and I draw a lot of art and stuff, and I'll probably, I also need to do some Hills Bills art now that mm -hmm. I'm caught up on projects, so I'll probably be doing that too, and we'll Share that, and you come look at pretty pictures that I draw. Please draw do that. Me. I will. You know I always draw will. <laughs> um, that's everyone, I believe. I haven't forgotten anyone this week like I did last week. I'm really sorry, Lisa. That's a lot terrible, of us. terrible human. Did you remember yourself? I'm just about mm -hmm. to do myself. Oh, okay. So, yeah, still checking. I, 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 I have, I've, I've, I've written a little thing. Yeah. So I'm Maz, I'm they, them, and thank you everyone for watching us again, our little disaster pals. Um, oh thank you to all my brilliant players for being here. Um, I'm going to give a little shout out for our friends, Rivals of Waterdeep. Um, I haven't oh, caught well today's show yet because mm -hmm. I was down having a secret dinner with Satina Ruti in London that was very exclusive and I'm fancy now. That's, that's my life now. Um, <laughs> It's not that exciting. We had tapas because the bar next door was football. Um, <laughs> yeah, so check out Rivals of Waterdeep. They had their first post storyline-wise. It's post Stream of Many Eyes. So they did Stream of Many Eyes. Then they did three prequels. Then that episode sits. And then this is their first one since after Stream of Many Eyes. So I'm going to go check that out tomorrow after I've had some sleep because I'm very tired now. Um, but we're back next week, same time, same place. Holly should be back with us, if she, unless she decides she likes her other family more and stays with them. Um, has anyone else got anything else to add? I'm sorry I horrified you all with the Modron dismembering plant. But that is... It's a that's, that's, man. That's, that's good. good stuff. That's I crunched ahead, so it's yes. fine. We had crunch time. It was great. Everyone had fun. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for watching and playing. I've said that five times already, but I'm just very tired now. And <laughs> like, let, let, let's just say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.